With the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, we are finally getting Maharaga's official introduction in the Jujutsu Kaisen anime. So today I'm going to go over Maharaga's abilities and how strong it is, meaning I'll touch upon all the information we have at present for the 8 hand rule sword divergent Scylla, Divine General. With that being said, there will be spoilers contained within the video, especially some more serious ones after we talk about the content that would have been shown in the latest Jujutsu Kaisen episode. But I'll be sure to give further warning when we reach that part of the video, so don't worry too much and let's get right into the video. Maharaga is the most powerful Shikigami that can be summoned from the 10 Shadow Technique, which is used by Megami Fushiguro. Outside of Maharaga, there's a total of 9 other shadows, as the technique suggests, that Megami can summon. But Maharaga is made to very clearly be the strongest one and the most uncontrollable. And this narrative becomes clear when you learn that within the history of the 10 Shadows technique, no user has ever managed to tame Maharaga and use it as a normal summon. At the current point we are in Jujutsu Kaisen's manga, we've seen a total of 9 of Megami's 10 Shadows. The first of the 10 shadows we see is the Divine Dogs, which is a pair of dogs, one black and white, that can be used for tracking and battle, though they later fuse to become totality. Next is Nue, which is a Shikigami resembling an owl that can fly and strike enemies with his powerful electric wings. Then we have Toad, which is a toad that supports Megami in battle, using his speed and long tongue. After that, we have Great Serpent, which is a giant snake mainly used for his speed and surprise attacks. Then we have Max Elephant, which is an elephant that produces massive volumes of water. Following up from this, we have Rabbit Escape, which is a swarm of rabbits summoned as a distraction. And after that, we have Round Deer, which heals using the positive energy from Reverse Curse Technique. Next is Piercing Ox, which deals insane damage, but can only run in a straight line. Then we have the Ninth Shadow Tiger Funeral, which we haven't seen independently as a summon yet, although we did see it fused with the new A Totality, so everything's still up in the air in its abilities. And last but not least, we have Maharaga. Prior to Maharaga's first summon during the Shibuya Incident arc, we see Megami on multiple occasions attempting to summon it whenever he's in a pinch. Literally within the first episode when Sukuna manifests, we see Megami making the hand seals for the summon, which was honestly justifiable, although there's many other times throughout the series where it's questionable if Megami should be risking his life so easily attempting to summon Maharaga. And there was literally a whole section about this issue before Megami unlocks his domain expansion where Gojo was telling him the harsh truth about how he acts. But the truth in the matter is, had he summoned Maharaga, there's very few people in the verse who would be able to take down this monstrosity. Further showing the potential of the Ten Shadows technique as a whole, even Sukuna, the King of Curses, was taken aback a bit when he fought Megami at the detention center and Megami attempted the summon. This moment playing part to why Sukuna ends up taking interest in Megami. When Megami summons Maharaga in a desperate attempt to save himself from Harita, he also reveals his technique giving the breakdown on how the Ten Shadows works. We know that the revelation of one's technique can provide them an advantage in battle, so it's safe to say that the Maharaga summoned by Megami and Shibuya was the strongest possible version he could have summoned at the time. Upon learning that the Ten Shadows technique enables this user to force people into exorcism rituals to try and tame any of the shadows, and that Megami can do this whenever he pleases, his trump card and nature to try and fall on summoning Maharaga whenever his life was in danger makes so much sense. Like when you put it into perspective, Maharaga is literally undefeated at this point. You know how in Baki you had all those criminals wanting to know defeat? That's Maharaga, he's never taken an L until he runs into Sukuna, who is said to be the strongest in history. All of a sudden, I can relate with the stress Harita had being forced into this predicament. You have an uncontrollable Shikigami that can't be tamed, and you have no choice but to try and defeat it. And with the context of a previous 10 Shadows and Limitless users killing each other, most likely with Maharaga being the deciding factor in both their deaths, even before knowing what Maharaga can actually do, it's already a problem. As deciphered by Sukuna, we learn that Maharaga has the ability to adapt to any and all phenomena which is insanely overpowered and honestly I'd be willing to say it's the most overpowered ability in the entire series. And we have even touched on Maharaga's basic kit outside of its ability to adapt. Maharaga possesses the Sword of Extermination, which is a blade that is shrouded in positive energy, which makes it extremely effective for killing cursed spirits. And in addition to this, Maharaga, as you'd assume by his massive build, possesses a devastating amount of physical strength, easily destroying the ground with his attacks and being able to send a 15-finger Sukuna flying across Shibuya, and following up just as fast, so when it comes to overall fighting capabilities, Maharaga is already a cut above the rest in Jujutsu Kaisen. Especially when you take into account the way Sukuna just violated Jogo, who is one of the strongest disaster curses and was dropping whole meteors, but could he even land one hit on Sukuna? Maharaga is a problem. Furthermore, Maharaga has insane durability which pairs well with the fact it can adapt to anything if you give it enough time. Maharaga's wheel serves as an indicator to his adaptations and the process of adapting, which begins with it receiving an attack of any kind. It then slowly begins adapting to the attack it received. Using the Sukuna fight in Shibuya as an example, upon receiving hits from this mantle, Maharaga regenerated his wounds, and upon the turning of his wheel, it then began to further adapt, allowing it to visually see Sukuna's slashing attack, and even deflect it, something which has never been done up until this point. Maharaga's adaptations can even enable it to change the nature of his energy, 
Like, it's honestly a matter of time when it comes to Maharaga's adaptations. There's no exception power-wise in JJK that Maharaga can't find a workaround, providing it hasn't been defeated before he reaches that point of analysis in his adaptations. Maharaga also finds multiple workarounds in his adaptations, making it extremely versatile, and when it receives identical attacks during the adaptation process, it speeds up the entire process. And the only way that Maharaga, who is already insanely powerful, can be defeated is if you destroy it quickly with a brand new attack that it hasn't adapted to yet. Which is why Sukuna used his fire arrow after the relentless slashing attacks from his malevolent shrine that Maharaga was in the process of adapting to, which naturally would prove difficult for most people who don't already have versatility with their cursed techniques. Sukuna, when going for the kill, even deduced the potential risk of Maharaga adapting to slash attacks as a whole, which would effectively kill his entire kit of cleave and dismantle. Despite the difference in nature of these slashing attacks, so he used fire to finish off Maharaga, but imagine other people who aren't fortunate enough to have attacks of different natures. Even if they were strong enough to potentially defeat Maharaga, they might not get a chance. So Maharaga already scales with the high tier characters of Jujutsu Kaisen, like the Special Grades, Gojo Sukuna, and a few others who fit the criteria to take down the trump card of the Ten Shadows. Now that's pretty much the rundown of Maharaga, but I'll just briefly touch upon future details we have of Maharaga in the manga that give you further insight as to how powerful Maharaga is. And honestly, there's serious spoilers from this point forth, like serious spoilers which might ruin the storyline and some of his major plot points for you, so I'll give you some time to leave if you don't want to get spoiled. But in relation to Maharaga, I've really given you the information you need to know. Mother, mother. So following Maharaga's introduction to the Shibuya arc, the next time we see him appear in the series is after Sukuna has acquired the Ten Shadows technique for himself. Automatically due to Sukuna's cursed energy output and overall understanding of Jujutsu, Maharaga is stronger than it was under the control of Megami. And with Sukuna in the driver's seat, we learn more applications of Maharaga's power and the true efficiency of this shadow. Against Jorozu, we see Sukuna using Maharaga's wheel separately to adapt her attacks and overall technique, without manifesting Maharaga fully. This strategy is worth noting just because it's an effective approach to those who aren't aware of Maharaga's existence, and I guess you could say it also prevents Maharaga from being destroyed during the process of adaptation. However, the user still needs to take the burden of adaptation from their opponent's hits, so it's still a risky endeavor. However, after adapting, Maharaga was able to be summoned instantly and destroy Yorozu's domain and perfect sphere technique, which is able to generate infinite pressure and would have 100% killed Sukuna if he was hit after he was imbued in her domain. But Maharaga's adaptation made light work of it, further showing just how overpowered this ability to adapt is. And then we have the stage where the two strongest in the verse collide, Gojo vs Sukuna. Maharaga was a vital piece in Sukuna's strategy against Gojo, and not to get too much into the battle itself, but Maharaga was able to bypass Gojo's infinity on multiple occasions, as well as being able to corner Gojo in hand-to-hand -hand scenarios, as well as during the domain clashes and other vital moments. Maharaga also experienced further evolution under Sukuna's control, seeming less like an uncontrollable force, but more like a companion during this battle. But with that being said, we have reached the end of the video. Maharaga is honestly one of my favorite characters within the JJK verse. Outside of his very unique design and cool abilities, the aura that Maharaga has when it's on the battlefield just leaves everything up in the air, since it can literally adapt to any and everything. Also, let's not lie, the name Maharaga is funny as hell. The memes that have also surfaced around this character, especially during the Gojo Sukuna fight, you just had to be there. Anyway, that's it for the video, and I hope I gave a good breakdown as to how strong Maharaga is. He's definitely one of the strongest characters in JJK, and it's literally just a Shikigami. So if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more Jujutsu Kaisen content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.